Hey, it's Shannon from iHeartRadio Canada here with Gracie Abrams. So good to see you. Hey, so you good to see you. You just flew in last night. Yes. You're going to eat all of the Montreal food. Going to eat everything in sight. Yes. Yeah. Have you had poutine before? Never in my life. Okay. Um, I saw some at catering. I'm, as soon as the set's over, I'm going to beeline right. for poutine. I've been talking to a lot of artists this weekend. A lot of them have been raving about the food at the in the artist world. So. Everyone that's ever been here before me, because this is my, my first time, um, everyone's like catering is the most unbelievable there you go. Of all time. Amazing. So, yeah, we're excited. Yeah, that's so good. You were just at Lollapalooza. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. How was that? It was the best, honestly. It was it was so much fun. The The crowds in Chicago are so great, and it's been some of my favorite stops on tour this past year, so to kind of, like, have it all at that scale was so special, and to be outside, it was just gorgeous. Yeah, that's yeah. obviously something that you're just, like, ticking the box. Lollapalooza, you got that. What Craziness. Else, what else is on the, like, career bucket list? Oh, man. I mean, like, literally everything. I don't, I can't imagine any of this stuff happening, and then it, and then it has, and I just, like, am pinching myself the whole time, honestly. Um, I've got some, like, some venues back home in L.A. that are bucket lists for sure, but we'll get there someday, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, so we have Simba from The Lion King to thank for your career, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. So, so embarrassing. <laughs> that's what it, that's, but um, The Lion King is kind of an inspiration into what got you into music, right? Well, one of my like early obsessions, for sure, in the like music world, I was just like would listen to the soundtrack in the car, uh, you know, every day on the way to school in elementary school, and like tried to get my voice to be as similar to Simba's as possible. I was like, I must mimic the tone. These days, um, you know, less top of mind, but I'm glad that we brought it back. Yeah, it feels definitely. We have nostalgic to. for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Who else during that time, or maybe even a little bit older than that, influenced maybe your songwriting? Oh well, I mean, Joni Mitchell is kind of like my all-time um, idol. I think everything that she's ever done is so unbelievable and um, and brave and and so entirely her. And then obviously like Taylor Swift and. And Lord, I remember seeing uh, was kind of like the most formative live music experience when I was young that that sh made me feel like there could be a version of performing that I wouldn't entirely like want to run away from from fear. Like she seemed so confident and unbelievable um, and she was so young, too. So it was kind of like to have a reference point of someone who's within like, you know, five years of age. That was pretty rad yeah and yeah. just that representation too of like her doing it and succeeding 100%. at it right yeah exactly yeah. and you have a taylor swift connection with aaron dustner <laughs> he's the best yeah he's like, and he's you've been working with him again we... recently yeah yeah he's kind of i mean we're we just we're doing so much together we have so much music it's um funny how many songs we've got at this point but uh yeah he's the he's the greatest yeah i've heard you talk about the fact that you can fire out a song with him in like a day is that typically the case yeah we normally do one or two a day just because we like i don't know why but it happens and it's the best and we just have no interest in standing in our way at all and we'll like go through a full week of getting one or two songs a day and completely forget about all the music that we made because it's just like we go so quick but it's it's so much fun and it's kind of like it feels like uh, the closest I've ever gotten in sessions to like what journaling feels like for me which I do so um, kind of like psychotically all the time yeah. so um, to have a partner in that is uh, really lucky ballpark figure how many songs do you think you have we've got like probably like 30 damn together now not bad not bad yeah <laughs> we'll what? get more we want to like keep climbing right what kind of songwriter are you are you like where are you psychotically writing all your is it notes in your phone is it oh journaling? it's every it's everywhere I've got like scraps of paper in every bag that I you know every like tote bag is if you like reach down, it just feels like there's receipts down there, but it's just like, you know, scraps of paper that I've scribbled on and um, my, you know, I keep my journal with me everywhere. It's in the green room <laughs> right now, like take it all over the place. Um, yeah, I just write all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Just feels good. I just need it, you know, yeah. for my brain. Yeah, for sure. That's such yeah. a great way. That's probably so therapeutic. It is. It's, it is. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me feel insane often, but, you know, doing stuff like this makes me feel, like, a little bit less insane about it. Right. Does putting together an album feel, like, so much more of a beast than an EP? Yes, um, but in a great way. Like, I'm, I'm having the best time, you know, ever right now making the project uh, or the album, and um, it just feels really good. It feels so good. It, I love Aaron so much because it's, you really do, and I think you, you hear it in everything he's ever worked on, but, like, He's so good at facilitating these environments where you can and completely create you know, a, a world of its own and, and to live inside that while we're making the album has been so good for 
my you know mental health even to get to a place of like feeling really grounded in what we're making um and it feels like separate and like kind of removed and i think a lot of that is because long pond you know it's kind of in the middle of nowhere and that's really special to to go to a place that feels like this like safe haven for writing um yeah. it's great yeah that's sweet yeah. that feels like it's almost like camp where you just like go away totally. and you're like it's like a different world it's like camp and his his whole family's out there so he has he has three kids that i you know play soccer with every day <laughs> and like you know go on nature adventures so it's a lot of fun that's so sweet yeah. obviously we've talked about the fact that songwriting helps with like anxiety and dealing with mental health things what are other ways that you find that help with coping with those types of things um, I, you know, like I, I, writing is my number one. Yeah. I go to therapy and I love that. Uh, and it's such an important part of my life. And, um, I, during quarantine, when I felt really stuck in my writer's block, I started cooking and baking a lot because I just like needed something to do with my hands, but I found it really like shut my brain off. And also the joy of food is kind of like unmatched, like, especially when you feel so strange and stuck and confused internally to like make a meal and have you know your family sit around the table if you're lucky enough to like share it with them like that just made me really happy so I guess that was definitely therapeutic during yeah. COVID speaking times speaking of um food July 2nd 2022 you tweeted I love, I love snacks, snacks. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, this has like weirdly haunted me. Really? It's yes. Come up. Darn. Yes. But um, I can talk about it if yeah, you want. I, I want to expand on that. Yeah. It's okay. Like we're investigative journalists here. So what snacks are we talking about? Um. Oh man. I mean, like literally any snacks. I touring it has been so much fun because of the snacks. Do you have a writer? Oh yeah. What do you have on the writer? Um. Oh, I have I have like this specific kind of granola that I'm obsessed with. Um, we've got like apples and crunchy peanut butter, and you know, uh, what else do we have on the rider? We've got Swedish fish. Nice. You know, just snacks. All the Gotta snacks. have them because you love snacks. Love snacks. That's so good. Thank um. You. Okay. So. <laughs> On TikTok, a lot of the conversations are about nepotism babies, but it seems like when people talk about that online, you're always the exception. They're like, oh, nepotism babies, but my favorite one is Gracie uh -huh. Abrams. What do you feel about that title? How do you feel about that in general? Um, I mean, listen, like, the familial connections are um, out of our control. Like, I think... I don't, I don't even feel any type of way. I think like the internet is a funny place for people to call anyone names. Right. And I, I, I feel like I've, I've been lucky in that it doesn't necessarily like get to me or anything, but I also completely understand where like anyone is coming from who would see like, oh, this person's mother or father is in some, you know, lane in the entertainment industry. I'm sure that it feels like there are unfair advantages and it's inevitable, like it's, it's undeniable that, that there is like a privilege in having even grown up around the knowledge of what the entertainment world looks like at all. Yeah, but just yeah. because of who your parents are, that's not going to make you th th the incredible songwriter that you are. I hope not, but I also do know that I, I definitely feel really lucky that I even grew up in a house where, like, I had, um, there was an adult in my life who was a grown-up telling stories all the time, and to know that that doesn't have to end when you're a kid, it was, um, you know, whether or not, it was like uh, on my mind when I was writing songs because it definitely wasn't. But like I think that that having that um, in my childhood just solidified my love and appreciation for storytelling and narrative, and yeah. um, probably definitely influenced the fact that I did it all the time, even a little. Yeah. But it definitely kept them so far out of it because I was, you know, songwriting for me and and like it, it was always just a personal uh, outlet to deal with my experiences without having to talk to anyone especially my parents for many years now I'm very lucky like I'm super tight with them and I tell my mom you know everything but um when I was younger at least I was like stay away <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. awesome Gracie thank you so much thank for taking you. the time oh so nice God. to chat thank you so nice to meet you thank you yeah. for everything awesome thanks guys